So, in case anyone has any doubts about Natasha's ability to sustain in-game, I'm about to prove you guys wrong again. <laughs> so, this is Apocalyptic Shadow. This is the brand new one that just came out. Uh, we're going to run Natasha's sustain. Uh, again, she's not exactly ideal, but she is more than sufficient to do this, and I'll show you how. So, uh, this is a Luca Super Break comp, so we are trying to make sure that Luca gets the break and enhanced basic on every hand and the uh, the core where possible. Uh, I do make a fairly critical mistake that actually cost me about 30 AV, so and I'll showcase that when we get to there. Uh, Natasha is using a slightly different build than she was previously, so last time I was using post-op conversation, this time we are using multiplication. Uh, and instead of an HP orb, we are using a energy regen uh, rope. Or sorry, ro uh, yeah, we're switching the HP rope for energy regen rope. The idea here is we want to make sure Natasha gets quick turns, so that way she can get her ult up quicker. Her healing power is reduced quite a bit. Normally I'm healing close to 2300, now we're only doing about 17. So it is a pretty big drop in the healing value, but we get our ult up quicker because of the quicker turns thanks to multiplication. And this is sufficient enough for this team to actually stay alive. So. Goal here is just to make sure that everyone uh, tries to avoid the stuns as possible. Ruin may being stunned uh, is not a huge problem, so if she gets stunned, it's fine. Uh, don't have to worry about it. There is a quite a bit of RNG with this fight because we are using Harmony MC, and he has a tendency of, uh, depending on which hand it tries to force him to attack to avoid stuns. Uh, I ended up in a couple situations where he would get the break, and then I couldn't kill the hand. Uh, quick enough, so it is absolutely imperative that Luca is the one who gets the breaks. Um, so there is some RNG on that, and just making sure uh, Harpy and MC isn't the one getting the breaks, but as long as you can avoid that, this is fine. And we want to make sure that Luca has as many stacks as possible. We want to keep the uh, enhanced uh, charges at four, if at all possible. We're going to ult immediately, uh, A, to get some stacks up, and two, um, good break damage. And then three, we're going to have his ult up back in time anyways. Uh, we save his ult specifically for the core. So, Take your positions. this point, it's down, we got uh, super break active, and we're just going to pile on just as much damage as we can, and just get ready for the next phase. Everyone's health is in good condition, so don't have to worry about anything there. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. Decided to ult there just to make sure I have enough damage, and I figure that Rowan May will get her ult back up in time for the uh, the next string of breaks. There is a bit of RNG here because of the turn order being a little different when you go into the phase two, so there's a good chance of someone getting stunned. Uh, again, if Ruin may get stunned, it's usually fine. Uh, if Natasha gets stunned, it's okay as well. Um, but if Luka gets stunned, it, yeah, it's you're, you gotta restart. It's unfortunate. Uh, make sure we uh, skill we want to make again make sure you have the four stacks and only use the enhanced basics when you're at ready to actually score some breaks uh, luckily HMC has to attack the right hand I don't know if there's a pattern to the imaginary or quantum debuff it does seem to be random I don't know if there's an actual pattern to it I haven't played enough to determine that at this point we can get the left hand down. Yep, we got Ruin May ult, so we're gonna make sure we have that all res pen ready for Luca to do his thing. And like I said, he's gonna have his ult up. And again, even though Natasha got stunned, because of the high speed and multiplication, her turn was still quick enough that she was able to get her turn before the core can do that AoE attack.
this point. Yep, the enhanced basic. Big damage. Yeah, 259,000. Super Break Luca is just silly. <laughs> Alright, so we got one hand down as soon as Luca gets his next turn. I don't know why the turnover on the left there is just completely empty. That's so weird. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, Luca will be able to get the left side. I make a huge mistake here. I should not have attacked the one in the center. I would have been better off just throwing a heal. And I'll explain why that was a mistake. Because you do any break damage to the one in the center, and when you kill the two hands, it's going to instantly break it, and you don't get a bleed break, which is what I kind of want. And that's what cost me the 30-ish AV. Yeah, it looks like about 33. Yeah, because I, I think I have to do a full turn over to Luca again. So this would have killed right here. And then we would have gone into the last phase, so yeah, 44 AV actually is what this cost me. Pretty critical mistake. Alright, boss is down, everyone's action gets advanced. Again, fire up all the buffs. It's pretty cookie cutter at this point. You just take advantage of Super Break and finish the fight out. Main thing is, with Super Break, um, I have some pretty decent break sets. My problem is my break sets don't have tremendous speed on them, so I had to tank Luca's uh, break effect uh, in order to get his speed up, because I had to get him up to like 150 speed for this to work. Uh, but he still has 180-ish break effect, which is sufficient. Um, my full build is like something like 230 or 240, <laughs> but then he's only got like 130 speed, which is a problem. But there it is. So yeah, 152 speed and 186.4% break effect. Solitary healing. I don't have his talent maxed. I, I foolishly maxed his uh, his skill for dot, which uh, yeah, people don't use Luca in actual dot comps. Uh, so yeah, that's something that will get corrected in time. And like I said, with Natasha, we're using multiplication. The only different uh, piece that was changed was the orb. We did switch over to an energy regen rope. Or, I keep saying orb, but yeah, so we're using energy regen rope, it tanks her HP, the multiplication gives you a lower base HP, so you're, and then you're also losing the heal bonus from post-op conversation on the ultimate heal. So that's why the heal drops from about 2300 down to 1700. But there it was, that's how you uh, sustain with Natasha, it's not that hard. Uh, 1370 AV would have been like the perfect run if I didn't make that one critical mistake. But there it is. So, anyone has any doubts that Natasha can sustain in game, uh, she doesn't, again, have to be picking her fights. I probably wouldn't run her on the Kafka side. Probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, but on this side, um, yeah, there's nothing for you to really cleanse. You can't cleanse the quantum or the imaginary uh, debuff that they put on here. So, that's the fight. If you uh, enjoy this content, like seeing a, a dude go crazy throwing uh, Natasha at sustaining in-game, I will continue to make videos like this to continue to prove people wrong. So if you like that, and go ahead and leave a like if you can, and if you're interested, go ahead and throw a subscribe.